So as we discussed in the previous lecture, in this lecture we will discuss the kernel density estimation method uh, which gives rise to the mean shift segmentation algorithm. So as we discussed previously, mean shift is a non-parametric algorithm that is it doesn't require the number of clusters to be specified beforehand. And in this lecture we will understand the kernel density estimation method and the derivation of the mean shift algorithm understand why mean shift is a mode seeking algorithm and how it can be used for the task of clustering a data set or segmenting an image. So let's begin with our problem statement. Uh, let's assume that we have a data set which is a set of m data points xi where each of the xi is an n dimension real vector and we have n and we have m such data points that is i goes from 1 to m. So each of the xi is an n dimensional real vector. Now let there be a multimodal distribution, perhaps a multimodal distribution. So let a P of x be a multimodal distribution. It's perhaps a multi uh, so we can assume it's a unimodal distribution as well, which further simplifies the discussion. But for the sake of generality, uh, we'll assume that P x is a multimodal distribution. So it is perhaps a multimodal distribution. So let's assume that the data set is sampled according to this distribution P of x. That is P of x generated all these m data points. That is we sample these m data points from this distribution, from this multimodal distribution. So we write it as or each of the x i is sampled from this distribution P of x. So now assume as usually is the case with any real world data set uh, that we do not know the underlying distribution P of x. So assume, so this is not a drastic assumption, it's, a, it's, it's, it's usually the case with any real world data set. So assume as is the case in, in, in real world uh, that we do not know the P. So we do not know what this uh, probability density function or probability distribution P of x is. So we do not know P of x, but we can observe the data that was sampled from P of x. But we have an observation, sorry, we have observations, we have m observations. So we have m samples or observations in the in the form of the point sampled uh, from this distribution inside this data set. So we have observed m data points sampled from this distributions. So we do not have access to this distribution. We only have access to the data set uh, that is generated or sampled from this distribution. So a natural question is, how do we compute, how can we compute a function, uh, let's denote it by f of x with some parameter h. So there's a function of x uh, with some parameter, tunable parameter h, such that this function f of x uh, parameterized by the parameter h well approximates uh, 
uh, the underlying data distribution that is p of x. So the question is how we can find p of x uh, that approximates the underlying data distribution. So to summarize the problem, we have a data set with m uh, data points, uh, where each of the data points is an n-dimensional real vector. Uh, we assume that it is generated by some distribution that we do not have access to. So we do not know what this probability density function p of x is, but we have an observation in the form of m data points uh, sampled or generated from this distribution. So the data set is generated uh, by sampling from this distribution. Uh, so a natural question is, is there a way that we can approximate this underlying probability density function by some function f, which is parameterized by some tunable parameter h, uh, so that it very well approximates the underlying data generating distribution. So the answer to that question is obviously yes. So in machine learning literature, there are many uh, methods available to approximate the underlying data distribution. And among the methods available in the machine learning and statistics literature, one of the methods is kernel density estimation. So the kernel density estimation uh, method or KDE for short uh, computes a function f of x parameterized by some tunable parameter h that well approximates the underlying data distribution which perhaps is a multimodal distribution. So the multimodal distribution means that it has many peaks. So for example, if we take a Gaussian distribution, it will look something like this. If we took a Laplacian distribution, it would be more pointy over here. So each of these distributions, so this is a Gaussian distribution, this is a Laplacian distribution. Uh, likewise, we can have many other distributions as well. So these are the instances of unimodal distribution. So the Gaussian, and the Laplacian are unimodal. That is, they have only one peak. So each of the peak in the probability density function is a mode of that density function. A multimodal distribution will have uh, two or more such peaks. So if we consider a mixture of Gaussians, that is, uh, we have one Gaussian over here, one Gaussian over here, and one Gaussian over here, then the uh, underlying density function may look something like this. So as we can see, it has three peaks and therefore it has three modes. So the kernel density estimation method gives us the ability to compute this functional mapping f of x parameterized by some tunable parameter h that well approximates the underlying multimodal uh, distribution that generated the data set. So this function f is parameterized by a single parameter h. And as we will discuss later, this H is known as the bandwidth parameter when we discuss the mean shift clustering algorithm. So before we begin with the rest of our discussion, before we start deriving the mean shift segmentation algorithm, and uh, before we work out all the mathematics behind the mean shift segmentation algorithm, we'll formally mathematically define the kernel density estimator. So the kernel density estimator or KDE for short, so given a data set D of m data points where each of the data point xi is an n-dimensional real vector. So given the data set D on an n-dimensional real space. So given D on n-dimensional real space.
the multivariate kernel density uh, estimator or uh, the multivariate kernel density estimation the multi the multivariate kernel density estimator with some kernel function k of x with some kernel function k of x and with some bandwidth or radius parameter with bandwidth or radius h is given by the following function so f of x parameterized by h is 1 over m h to the power n sum over all i from 1 to m k of norm of x minus x i over h square or sometime we write this kernel density estimator uh, simply as f of x parameterized by h ignoring this term over here sometime we write this kernel density estimator as simply 1 over m times sum over all i from 1 to m the same term over here k of x minus x i over h square. So, as we discussed previously, this data set D is sampled from some distribution p of x and we do not know what the probability density function p of x is and the problem statement is to approximate that multivariate uh, probability density function with some functional mapping f of x parameterized by h. So, we are trying to approximate this uh, multivariate probability density function uh, with function f of x with some bandwidth or radius parameter h. Uh, so, the kernel density estimator function f uses a kernel function k to approximate uh, the underlying data distribution and the formula for the function f which is a kernel density estimator is given by this equation. So, this function f of x parameterized by h approximates the underlying data distribution. So, this function f is known as the kernel density estimator. So, we will just write it over here. So, this function f is known as the kernel density estimator. What it means is that the density, so what it means is that the density that is uh, the underlying density function, so the density evaluated at point x with the kernel density estimator is given by the following formula. Sum or all i equal to 1 to m k of norm of x minus x i over h square. Uh, so, going forward we will now discuss what are the popular choices of this kernel function 
and then we will graphically understand like how does the kernel density estimator approximates the underlying probability density function and then we will discuss uh, how we can use the kernel density estimator to find the clusters in a given data set and through that discussion we will mathematically derive the mean shift algorithm.